Hello everyone, this is Bill Apter down here at Apter's Alley and on this very special Apter chat, as you know, all over the internet and every place you go, people have been talking about this situation with the, the fabulous moolah and a lot of negativity has gone on about the fabulous moolah. I knew moolah very well and today I was chatting with uh, an old, dear old friend, uh, Joyce Grable, who worked for moolah for many, many years, and she was very outraged by some of the things that she's heard going on here. So I invited Joyce to, uh, because no one's come out and told the story from the perspective of someone who was one of Moolah's regular girls and worked for her for many, many years. Joyce, welcome to the After Chat. Well, hey, Bill. It is so good to hear your voice. And I, by the way, I did the very first story on Joyce Grable when she debuted at Madison Square Garden. Was that early 1971? Yes. Yeah, 71 it, is yeah. when I started, yeah. It, and I came almost immediately up there, and uh, and you took such good pictures and well, interviews. Thank you. And, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. So uh, you've heard everything, and I looked at your Facebook page. And uh, you were very outraged about some of the things that have been said. And I said, well, you know what? Nobody's been on any shows or anything talking about um, the good stuff, all the thing about Moolah. So how many years did you work for her? Almost 13 years straight. Uh, you know, back then, we didn't have days. We didn't work one day a week. It was off. We worked seven days a week and usually twice on Saturdays. And so I started working for her in 71, and I left in 84. And the first day I went there, uh, showed you the contract. You knew how much percentage you was taking uh, when you were booked. I mean, not until you were booked. When you made a payoff, she took her percentage. Like the actors do, they have a booker, uh, agent who books them and they get a percentage. Okay. Well, we knew right up front and personal what that percentage was. And so it was no big deal when she took it out. And like myself, when I got ready to leave, I, I, I said, well, I wasn't really ready to leave. I was wanting a little raise uh, to take less percentage because I had been there so long. Yep. And she said, no. And so I said, hmm, well, let me think about it. I gave her a three month notice and I left. So I couldn't say anything bad about her. I mean, she was my boss. I was the, the, the worker. If I didn't like it, I could either go through her terms or quit. And so that's what I decided to do. There was never hard feelings or nothing. In fact, Lillian, and I always called her Lillian, I hardly ever called her Lula. When my husband uh, in 98, and I had been gone for her for a long time, had a massive heart attack and lost his short-term memory. Her, Mae Young, and Diamond Lil came down. They did a benefit wrestling. One of my fellow uh, wrestlers here in Georgia, they did a show. They drove from Columbia, South Carolina to LaGrange, Georgia to do the benefit, to sign autographs. May and another little girl wrestled. And so, hey, she couldn't be that bad. I mean, she got no pay, no nothing. It was out of the kindness of her heart that she did this. And and then for them to say, people on the internet, that she pimped us out, yeah. that she would send men to our rooms and stuff, that is a bald face lie. She never, ever, I, I, I was with her all of those years, never once, once did she send a man of, of any sort yeah. to my room for anything, I mean, because usually after the matches, like today, we, uh, you know, we got together with the guys, we went out drinking, we had some few drinks, mm -hmm. and we went back to our rooms early next morning, we had to go to the next town. 
I mean, there just wasn't any time for stuff like that. I don't know where they got that idea from, but, you know, Bill, I was a pretty woman and didn't know it. I had a good body back then. I mean, if you look at the photos when I was in my bikini and stuff, my publicity shop, you know, I was a bad-looking woman. And so don't you think that she would have sent guys to a pretty yeah, lady I, wrestler I, I, I instead so. of the ones that were not pretty? Yeah, yeah. I mean, consider... <laughs> Consider the whole table there, you know, in the 70s and 80s. And, uh, you know, there was a few of us that were really good wrestlers back then. And and we had fun on the road. We did. We had fun. But it wasn't nothing to do with Lillian. I mean, it wasn't her that was uh, behind everything. Now, she was our boss. Yeah. She said, you dress like a lady when you go to the ring. You dress like a lady when you walk into the arena. You never know who's going to be watching you. And so we always had our makeup on, our hair fit. We didn't wear shorts into the arenas. We didn't, you know, she taught us. She was our boss. And it is if it wasn't for her, that saying, oh, that's a pretty blonde-headed girl there. If she'll come wrestle, I'll train her. And that's how I got into the business. So you never and saw her, all these accu accusations that are online about her uh, abusing people in so many ways. You were with her day and night for so many years. Right. Yeah, and you never saw any of that. And never saw it and never had it done to me. Okay. Uh, I mean, and I just want to make sure we get. I just want to make sure yes. we get the other side of this out there because right. everything out there right now is uh, just totally negative. negative. Yeah, yeah. Next, and, and if they weren't there, they don't know what they're talking about. And uh, and like I said, yes, some of the girls got ill because of the percentage that she took. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we were all young, and we all did things back 20 years ago. Wait, that we jo Joyce, dare do now. Joyce, did you just say they got ill or they got upset? No, well, they got upset. Okay, okay. I thought you said ill, you know. So. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. They, they got upset over, you know, when she would take it out. Uh, especially when they would be expecting a bigger payoff. But it, didn't it vary from town to town? And, and the, yes. uh, the The percentage was the same, but if there was less of a crowd, then you got less money. You got Correct? paid by what the door. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, unless you went in on a guarantee. See, like when we went to Canada, Mexico, Japan, any other out-of-state places, we went on a guarantee. So we knew exactly how much they were paying us and how much our booking charges were. Okay. And uh, and so, you, you know, you knew up front how much was going to be taken out of that check. Right. Sometimes, sometimes they would pay us, like in New York and other states, you know, we were in territories back then. Sure. Uh, New York would pay either every night or every other night. And so that money would come straight to us, and we would give her the money when we got home. But like Georgia and some of the other states, they would, after a week, you'd work a week before you got paid, and they would send the money to Lillian. So we wouldn't really know what our payoffs were till we got back off for our trips, mm -hmm. and we went in and settled up with her. Right, right, right. And, but she always had it all written down. And uh, usually she had taken photocopies of the checks to show you. A few times she didn't, but, you know, most of the time she did. And so, you know, it's like any other job. Uh, you knew uh, basically how much you was going to make. I could look at a crowd and say, my payoff is going to be this t tonight. Yeah, yeah. I could tell by the crowd how much I was probably. With, within 
$25, I usually have it correct. Okay. And she never forced, um, she never forced you or any of the girls that you know to do anything that uh, you were uncomfortable with? No, no. Okay. Okay. Uh, like when Germany, I think it was Germany, uh, one of the other countries, uh, they had called her about sending two girls. And she asked me, she said, Joyce, now, over there, you wrestle in two-piece suits. The winner of the match takes the top off of the loser. Mm -hmm. okay. And she says, I, I don't know about this. I said, well, I won't do it. And she said, oh, okay, then we're just going to say, I'm just going to say no to this booking. Okay. And, and so, I mean, she gave... I could have said yes and went over there and did it. Yeah. But I said no. And and so she did not tell me, well, you got to go. She just called the booker and told him no, that, you know, the girls just couldn't do that. Okay. All right. Well, I think we've heard uh, uh, the other side of the story now. And it's just not fair that all that negative stuff is out there without somebody reaching out like I did to you today after seeing your Facebook page. And uh, I assume people can uh, can reach out to you on your Facebook page and make their comments, etc. And I want to thank yeah. you so, so very much for uh, agreeing to do this today. Well, you are very welcome. And I love all of my fans still. And uh, I just want Lillian, give the devil her dues. I mean, none of us are perfect, but she tried hard to give us girls a good place to live, food on our table, and then to say these bad things about her. It just tears my heart out. I understand, Joyce. I understand. Bill Apter with Joyce Grable, and uh, uh, thank you all for listening to this as well.